another because why not? May as well live it up. Can I give you a friendly piece of advice? Sure. Never borrow money. Especially if it's from a psychopathic loan shark whose friends are gonna murder you if you can't pay it back. YOLO, am I right? Oh, speak of the devil, and he grabs you by the shoulder and spins you around. You're out of time, John. Oh, obviously I know this. Oh. Another one, Barky. Oh. 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 Wow! Why so hostility? Oh, hello, beautiful. That's right, I'm drunk. <laughs> scene, I looked at it as four sections. The first section is the setup of our story, which our goal was to set up a very simple and vague storyline where the audience could fill in the blanks. The second section was our first bit of fighting. We're triggered into this with our lead character being thrown across the room. And here, I wanted it to feel a bit chaotic. Our lead character was just totally thrown off guard, and I wanted to mirror that visually, so we went handheld. The positioning of the lights in the bar scene was important because we needed to be able to allow Ryan to move freely. We kind of had to light in an almost 360 degree field of view. After we had all the lights positioned just right, Ryan was able to take the handheld camera and along with James, our focus puller, using the DJI follow focus, was able to navigate through the whole fight scene seamlessly without having anything get in the way and being able to have the focus pulled properly. Now. Ryan wasn't quite sure exactly where he was gonna be shooting at any given time, so James was able to follow Ryan around and judge the distance between the action and the lens at any given time. Luckily, the DJI Focus worked great. We never had any lag. Uh, it's instantaneous. It's very, very sensitive, which was needed to pull these kind of shots off as well. And action. <laughs> The fight was a lot of fun because it's, it's supposed to be brutal and I, I think the idea was sort of that 
I don't want to fight, I'm just angry, and if you corner me, I'm going to fight back. So we choreographed a fight where everyone would attack me, and most of it was just a defense. So if I got attacked, I would defend myself and respond. In order to keep it all safe, we worked it up slowly, and we always kept distances. And so we did what's called stacking the punch for every hit, which is where you make sure that the hit happens between your face and the lens. Nick Barrick would throw the first punch. I would catch it, and it would still hit me in the head. Depending on where we shot it from, I'd have to catch it in a different spot. The camera's here, I have to catch it here to hit. I can't catch it here or make space. So we always had to keep aware of that and if you cross the camera we can be very far away and still look like we're hitting so keeping our distance uh, allows us to give it a lot of energy and make it very exciting the other thing that we do is we just try and take up a lot of space physically if you're fighting this small you have to move very fast to make it exciting but if you're taking up a lot of space it makes it really exciting very quickly and by moving slower and taking up more space, everyone has a lot more control. Action! In order to pull off the style of shot that Ryan wanted for the dance floor part of the bar brawl, I knew we were gonna need a different setup than what we had at the upper part of the bar. One, we weren't gonna go handheld, we were gonna put the camera on the Ronin. This allowed us to have a nice stabilized shot that we could repeat over and over again. Also, we were gonna need to put the follow focus onto the Ronin. Although the DJI follow focus motor doesn't add an incredible amount of weight to the setup, the fact that we have a red on there with a Cineprime, and monitor and batteries, the rig itself does weigh quite a bit, which is why I use the exoskeleton. With this type of setup, I'm less likely to get fatigued, allowing me to run the shot over and over again until we get a perfect take. And lastly, we put the thumb controller on the Ronin. With all the fighting that was happening around me on the dance floor, I wasn't able to safely push my hands out away from me in order to get the Ronin to pan and tilt. And we didn't have room for a second operator with the remote control to be down there as well. So having the thumb controller built right onto the Ronin, I was able to pan and tilt perfectly with the action while James still pulled focus and we were able to repeat that over and over again for those long fluid shots in the dance floor. The final moment where uh, Don, our lead bad guy, comes back to consciousness after getting a bottle smashed over his head, comes to get me, throws me against the railing, and then I throw him over the railing. A few things to know is Don is a trained professional and he knows exactly what he's doing. We had a whole bunch of pads down below for him to land in. We also did it as few times as we felt was necessary to get it right. And we also took our time making sure that Don had it his way. He would attack me and he would throw himself over the railing and I would simply guide him. I was not throwing him over the rail and that's one way to keep things safe is he is doing his own thing. He was also wearing padding on his body to protect himself from the railing and other things. When I got kicked back into the rail I had a big back pad on to help soften the blow for me. In our fourth and final section we have our main payoff. Our character has his last conflict, he learns to put his drink down first, but ultimately is knocked out not by the dude sent to rough him up, but just from one too many drinks. And here we went with a mixture of handheld and sticks to call back to the first two sections and tie everything together. So in the end, we have this escalating action scene that feels part of a greater story because of very simple additional brushstrokes, which is a mixture of dialogue, cinematography, and performance. 